Hi everyone. We are going to continue our session on break even between two alternatives. To the, what was the purpose of um, this uh, session? So actually, to determine the value uh, of common variable between two alternatives. So what there is a three steps. Okay, as, as, as listed there. Uh, the first one is to define the common variable. So we need to identify between two alternatives, between the two alternatives given, okay? two scenario, two constant, or two parameters. So we need to identify the common variable, a equivalent variable between two alternatives, because we all do, uh, because we want to choose, so we need to compare apple to apple. So the second one is to develop equivalence, PW, AW, or FW. So we need to make sure uh, to standardize um, the relation between two uh, using equivalence of present worth, annual worth, or future worth as function of common variable for each alternative. So once we have this, so we, what we need to do is we equate the relations. We equate the relations. Equation one equal to equation two, and then we're going to solve for the variable. So this is the break-even value that we are looking for. Okay, so we should familiar to this uh, diagram. Uh, it's actually showing the uh, what the common variables units here when it's match between alternative one. Let's say this is the alternative one. Okay, the total cost. And this is the alternative two, the total cost. So where is the intersection is going to be the break even. So why we equate between, between two alternatives to find out where the intersection is going to be. So value below break even, you select higher variable cost. Okay. And value above the break even, we're going to select the uh, lower variable So this is the example for two alternative break-even analysis. Usually is either to make or buy. Okay, we call it make-buy analysis. Okay, you have a situation that you need to decide uh, whether to make uh, uh, your product or you buy your product or to, to do it in-house or you outsource the project. So basically, uh, we need to find out the common variable, let's say x for this example, which is the number of unit produced each year. So the quantity, the quantity of the production. So we need to find out the uh, function, the relations. So in this example, it's AW. Uh, as we always uh, remind you, make sure we equate using the same uh, units. So if it's AW, then you should have all the calculations AW. If it's PW, be consistent with PW and the same for FW. So let's say we done. So this is AW for alternative one, for make, and this is for buy. So for buy, you know, uh, X is quantity, and this is 1.5, okay, minus 1.5. <coughs> and for make, we have, uh, we have the equations here. And again, we're going to have the X as the quantity. So once we have uh, the equation like this, how to solve, equate, equate the AW relations. So how we do? So we solve for this first, okay? We solve for this first, sorry. Solve for this one first. So you got this value, okay? And here, the by, and we'll work for by. So when we equate, so can we find the x? Yes, okay. So doing the mathematical operation, we're going to get x is 4,116 per year, the quantity. So how to decide if anticipated production is greater than 4,116, then we select the make alternative, okay? The make alternative, because it's lower variable cost. So the example in terms of the graph shown here, 
So this is the graph for make <coughs> for the AW and this is for buy. So the intersect here. So, so, so the intersection is here. So this is the value of the event, which is the X. Okay, so we got one four one one six. So by having this, though we know uh, which one is better for us. So if we buy, if it's more than four one one six, say lower variable. And we also can use uh, goal seek tool. Okay, uh, so this is more to using the spreadsheet function. Okay, uh, goal seek uh, find the given value for the common variable between two of them. So we give problems here two machines with the following statements. So they ask you to use the spreadsheet and then you to select one at MRR 10% and the second goal seek to find the value. So here they're going to. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, show the example on using this. Okay. Basically, you need to understand the function here, okay. which we, we, we didn't cover in, in, in our scope this time. Okay. So, but just letting you know that we have uh, the function uh, of, of this using, using the spreadsheet. So, this is goal seek fine. So, this is the Information that we fill up. Okay, so we're going to get it. Get information. Get it inside. That's fine. Just go to the. Uh, this is the example. Okay. Uh, so providing. Rest so you can try to do this. Uh, providing restroom at parks, zoos, and other city-owned recreation facilities is a considerable expense for municipal government. City councils usually opt for a permanent restroom. So they, they want a permanent restroom in larger parks and portable restroom in smaller, smaller parks. So the cost of renting and servicing portable restroom, portable restroom is 7,500 per year. So in one north, Northeastern municipality, the parks director informed the city council that the cost of constructing a permanent restaurant is 218k and the annual cost, annual cost of maintaining it is 12,000 per year. So he remarked that the rather high cost is due to the necessity to use expensive materials and construction techniques that are tailored to minimize damage from vandalism that often occurs in unattended public facilities. If the useful life, okay, so here the UN of permanent restroom is assumed to be 20 years, how many portable restrooms could the city afford to rent each year and bring even with the cost of one permanent facility? So I is six percent. So now we are going to equate uh, what well, if you want to solve this problem. Okay, actually we're going to find uh, x number of portable restroom. Okay, uh, and it break even with the cost of the one permanent facilities. So we are going to equate the portable restrooms cost with the permanent facility. So. So I hope you can you can try this uh, so you can uh, have a better understanding on this uh, favorite created analysis. So uh, cost for renting, okay, cost for cost for renting uh, is seven thousand five hundred. So actually, cost for renting you need to equate with the uh, construct, constructing. Construct. So basically, uh, it's good if you can uh, draw the cash flow diagram to illustrate the environment, the situation. So the cost of renting a portable restroom is seven. So you're going to have here for the portable, uh, is minus seven 
0.5 or this is 1500. Okay, and you should put X. This is the quantity we don't know, right? So one is here, this one. But we were going to equate it to the, the construction. So to construct permanent restroom is 218,000. So what is 218,000? This is first cost. First cost is P, right? Again, negative because cash outflow. 218,000. Zero, zero, zero. So we need to use the same AW. Because here is annual, this one is annual, so this is P. Okay, so we want to find A given P uh, for what is the other information that we have? 20 years and 6%. 6% and 20 years. Okay. And then what else? And we have annual cost is already given in AW, so we minus 12,000. Okay. So you're done on this. <clears throat> so if you solve uh, for this one, you're going to get, uh, so please refer to the table for this one. AP620 was what would be the, the value, or you can use the formula to calculate. So if you check the table, I hope you check the table. So uh, it would be 0 0.08718. Okay, so please solve for this. So you're going to get uh minus thirty one zero zero five point twenty four <clears throat> okay so here is seven five zero zero x so you are looking for the x X uh, is this minus by this, right? So we're going to get uh, somehow in 4.13 something. Okay. So they are asking how many portable restrooms could the city afford to rent each year, which break even with the cost of permanent facilities? Okay, so this is the, the scenario for permanent facilities, and this is for uh, renting, right? Okay, so we, we equate both, and we got four, four point something. So, so it's so it's four. You can have you can't have four point one bathroom, right? So it's four. So four bathrooms. So this is the final answer. <clears throat> so the same, uh, the same procedure as well. Uh, basically, you equate both after understanding the, uh, the scenario. Okay. So we have another question here. Question four. You can try. Please try by yourself. Uh, so the answer is given here. You can always check for the answer. And if you have any. Um, inquiries or you need assistance so you can uh, please free to contact me okay so that's the uh break even for two alternatives so our last part today <clears throat> is the payback period analysis so what is payback period it's an estimated time actually we know break even do break even value break even quantity that we checked previously but when when? So here specifically, we are going to analyze the, the period, the, the time, okay? Estimated amount of time, <coughs> NP. And for payback period, uh, for cash flow inflows to recover an initial investment, P. 
plus a stated return of rate return of return rate of return actually stated rate of return. Right. So we have types of payback. We have two. One is no return means that what's the meaning? So they don't have I and discounted payback. Okay, discounted. So no return payback means rate of return is uh, zero. Means that they don't have any any interest rate charged. I is equal to zero. Okay, this is the recovery of only the initial investment. So means that if you invest ten thousand, okay. So when is your uh, payback? After that, you get back ten thousand. Okay, so it's different. If it's discounted payback, means that with I with the interest rate, they consider stamp value of money, especially when the interest is greater than zero percent. So in that sum written, for example, they say 10% per year. So must be realized in addition to recovering the initial investment. So if you invest 10,000, so you should consider that the payback is no 10,000, but plus this 10%. Okay. So payback period analysis is, uh, is a question. Uh, payback period analysis is good. Uh, it's a good initial screening tool rather than the primary method to justify a project or selection. <laughs> So basically, this is the most important thing. Okay, we, we have the formula. So we are going to use uh, this formula. We have equation one is for no return. Okay, it's for actually equation one and two are for no return. What's the difference? This is for net cash flow that varies annually. Okay, varies annually. And this one is annual uniform. So it's same for uh, for the periods net cash flow, but this one is different. So we have a different formulation for this one. It's going to the ratio between uh, your P and also the the principal, and also with the NCF, the net cash flow. So this one is the sum summation of the uh, net cash flow for the periods given, but we minus usually uh, the principal. And the second one is discounted, the, the second part actually. So this one is for discounted, equation three and four. Discounted mean we got I. I is not zero. So what are the difference are the same. Okay. So the equation three is for net cash flow that varies annually. So they it's not the same for year one, year two, year three. Okay. If you have um, net cash flow for year one until year five, 5,000. So that's uniform. Okay, we're going to use the equation number four. But first year is 5,000 you got, the second year is 3,000, then 5,000, 1,000. So it's not, it's not uniform. So that we call varies annually. So we are going to use equation three. So basically you need to uh, remember that we have this formula, which is, 100% is going to depend on this formula. So this is some of the points to remember about payback analysis. No return payback neglect time value of money. Okay, so no return is expected for the investment. Okay, we are clear on this. No cash flows after the payback period are considered in the analysis. Return may be higher if these cash flows are expected to be paid. Okay. So no cash flow after the payback period are considered. Means that we, we consider the payback period fine. So after that, we are not going to uh, consider. And if we consider, we're going to have a more, uh, more <coughs> higher uh, gain. Approach of payback analysis is different from PW, AW, and ROR, uh, and BC analysis. A different alternative may be selected using payback rely on uh, payback as supplement to use PW or uh, AW. Okay, just a minute. <clears throat> okay, check on this. Okay. 
So we are here just now. Uh, use PW or AW again. Ma, I'm sorry. PW AW R. Thank you. It's different from PW AW R and DC analysis. A different alternative may be selected using payback. So rely on payback as supplement to, but we use PW or AW added. Ma for available decisions. This is especially when you want to decide. Okay. So discounted payback I is more than zero. Give a good sense of risk involved. Okay, fine. So we're going to see the example. Uh, I believe the the last example maybe. So for the payback analysis. So this is the scenario given. System one and system two. Of course, we need to choose which which system are good or we can get a return earlier. The return, the payback. So this is the first cost. This is the net cash flow. Uh, this is clear. They, they only have uh, per year 3,000. Okay. And maximum life seven. Okay. Uh, so system two, we have 8,000, the first cost. And net cash flow for year one to year five uh, is uh, 1,000. And then for year six to 14 is 3,000. And maximum life is 14. Okay. So problem, use A, no return payback. B, discounted payback at 15%. So the first one is no return payback. Means that we don't have, we don't have an I. So for no return payback, so go back to our formula. No return is this one. And then uh, which formula we are going to use? So either if it's uniform, equation two, uh, varies, equation one. Okay. <clears throat> so here we can consider is uh, as a you know is a, a uniform okay because three thousand per year okay uh, so the first pass is twelve so when in which year we are going to cover our capital our investment okay so check the equation uh, so it's twelve thousand NP one here. <laughs> NP1. So we are going to use the uh, equation for N equal to P over NCF. Okay. This one. Because it's uniform. For varies, we're going to use this one. So just refer to the formula every time you want to. Sort this kind of thing. So 12,000 is P, okay, the first cost uh, uh, divided by NCF. So 3,000. So it's clear four years. So they need four years uh, to get back their uh, investment. Means that after seven years, maximum life, right? So they have seven years. So the other three years, they're going to make profit. This is just for understanding. But for the solution, this for the for this uh, example, we got four years, the NP. How about NP2? So this one, you're going to use another uh, equation, equation one, because it's very same. Okay, minus P plus the summation of, N, uh, of this. <coughs> so this one, P, Minus P plus, okay, this, uh, five, okay, five, because, uh, you know, uh, five plus, multiply with 1,000, and then plus one multiply with 3,000. So, uh, the first five years is 1,000, okay, this one. And then we have 3,000 here, 3,000 here, okay, year 6 to 14. So why is 1? Why is not uh, 9 years, okay, year, year 6 to year 14 is 9? Why? Why do you put 1? Actually, we, if we back to the formula, you see, it's 0, okay. We want it zero. When when we get back the 
when we get back the investment that we did here, the 8,000. Logic, use, use our common sense. So the, the investment is 8,000. When you're going to get back 8,000, so five multiplied with one is uh, 5,000. So we need three more thousand, right? So the, the year six, we got 3,000. So we need just one year, means that year number six to, to, to cover our capital. So why we got six years? So we need to remember, we, we, we need to equate this into zero. We want zero. If you put nine years or whatever the years, eight years or seven years, they're not going to get this. Even this means that after year six, they're going to make profit. So year seven to year 14, they are making profit. What we are calculating here is when, is when we are going to get back our investment. So considering you need four years for uh, system A and six years for system two, which one you're going to select? Of course, we are going to select the system that will break even or will give will pay back us earlier. Okay, so we select system system. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we continue. Uh, the payback analysis for uh, for second question being asked. Okay. Uh, discounted. The back done. This one is PW analysis to select the system. Okay. So B use equation three and four. Okay. Uh, here, here is is what's the question? We have I. We have I. I been given as fifteen percent. Okay, so go back, check the formula again. Okay, uh, this one is for <coughs> various annually, this is for uniform. So we need to use both of the formula because we have uniform and we have various. So the same thing we need to uh, make it, we want, we want it at, uh, at zero, so 12,000, the P. This is for system one. Okay, 12,000 plus 3,000 uh, is given in A per year. Okay, so we need to find B, P. So it's 15 and we don't know, right? P1, we want to find the P1. Uh, so it's 6.66. 6. If you solve this, you're going to get 6.66. 6. And then system two, uh, use the another formula, uh, zero. So this is the P. And then for, for this one, it's 1000 A. So we have to shift it to P, 15, and it's five. Plus this three. Okay. 3000 P A. A is given we want to shift it to P, 15. So this is the period of uh, of this one, okay, of this six to fourteen, okay, six to fourteen, and then since you have, if you if you draw the cash flow diagram, it's going to be more clearer. So now it's P, but P at year five, okay. So we want to shift it to year uh, zero, so it's become F. So we, we shift it to P, fifteen percent five. So we're going to get. 9.5 years. So if we compare 6.6 .6 years and 9.5 years to recover, so we're going to select system one because it's quick, uh, six earlier than this is the second system. Okay. And here is find PW. So we just uh, change everything to, I mean, calculate the PW in order for, uh, for 15 years, right? For 15 years, sorry, 14 years. So this one is going, going to uh, have the same cycle for two two cycles. So we need to calculate the cost involved. I think you learned this in the basic previous chapters. So you should get uh, 63 and 24070. Uh, so for PW1, uh, you got 
and PW2 is 2470. So in this case, in this case, they select system two. So they have a comment here, PW method considers cash flow after payback period. Okay, so PW is after, so why is, because here is our 6.6, .6, you already um, got your payback, but you're going to count until seven. But if you need to equate, it takes two time.